Hello everybody and welcome to a video on the best weapons you can get very early on in Gunfire Reborn. I won't cover all of the strong weapons in the game, rather the point is to cover the ones that as a newer player you will easily have access to. First off we have a few weapons that require no unlocks whatsoever. The Cavalry, Scorching Rounds, and Piercing Flame. Cavalry is a burst fire rifle that takes normal ammo and has great single shot damage along with a passive which allows every third shot in a burst to be a guaranteed crit. It has a hefty default mag size at 42, a great rate of fire, and a pretty fast reload, which makes it a great weapon to clear out all of the lesser enemies, and then swapping to another harder hitting weapon for the big boys. Cavalry is a good early game option, however, due to dealing only normal damage and not any elemental, its uses are limited outside of the first zone without some great inscription RNG. And don't worry, I will address inscriptions here in a bit. Next up is the Scorching Rounds Pistol, which uses large ammo. It's actually more like a hand cannon than a pistol, with its four round magazine size and massive three times crit multiplier. It also has an extremely fast reload speed, so as long as your aim persists on a target, you will continue popping off shots almost as if you never reloaded in the first place, provided, you know, you didn't already kill the target you were shooting at. Scorching also deals fire damage, which has the chance to burn a target and deal some extra damage over time, but, and more importantly, it deals extra damage to any red bar HP. Shields, which are blue, and armor, which is yellow, will each take less fire damage due to requiring lightning or corrosion damage respectively, but once you penetrate those, or if you are fighting something with only red HP in the first place, you'll be dealing extra damage. I am unaware of the exact amount of bonus damage, but we can safely assume it is in line with the increases and decreases to both shields and armor, which are 50%. Meaning if you're using a fire weapon on red HP, you are dealing 50% extra damage. Likewise, if you're using fire on yellow HP, then you're dealing 50% less damage. Again, the same increases and decreases apply to shields and armor. And if all of this is kind of mumbo jumbo to you, do not worry, I'm planning on making a separate video talking about it all. Anyway, Scorching Rounds is a great weapon to pick up at any point in a run, and again, with the right modifiers, it can definitely carry you the entire time. Last but not least for the starting weapons is the Piercing Flame. It's a sniper rifle that uses special ammo and also deals fire damage. It has a five round magazine and has amazing single target damage due to its four times crit multiplier. Even the enemies with shields and armor will be one or two tapped by headshots early on, and so long as you keep killing stuff, you'll keep getting ammo, which means you can spam the sniper all day if you want to keep landing those one taps. If you have any fond memories of quick scoping and Call of Duty, try the piercing flame out because man, it feels nice. And again, insert the obligatory, it's good with good rolls and could carry you later on too. You know what? Speaking of the rolls, let's just go over the inscriptions now for all the weapons. Again, I am tailoring this content to any newer players, so I won't go over any of the souped up, unique, or Gemini inscriptions, just the common ones that you'll find starting out. For all guns, the big three rolls you want are rate of fire, crit percent, and lucky shot chance. There are other good mods as well, such as magazine size, but if you land any number of the big three, you will absolutely feel the power increase on that weapon. I'll make another video covering weapon inscriptions in detail, so for now, just be on the lookout for anything related to crit percent, lucky shot, or rate of fire, as they are all super strong on any gun, regardless of the other rolls. For the last two weapons, we have the Lightning Blast and Prism, both of which are locked behind some rather trivial tasks, killing 20 spearmen and poison grenadiers respectively. You'll get both of these weapons within your first handful of runs, if not on your very first one, so they're basically starting weapons too. The Lightning Blast is a rifle that deals, unsurprisingly, lightning damage and fires akin to your standard sci-fi plasma rifle consuming normal ammo. It also has an extra ability that shoots a small sphere out and allows any of your shots, including from your different weapons, to pass through and gain 50% bonus damage. So it's a plasma rifle with some extra single target DPS built in. Sounds pretty good already, right? Well, it gets even better because of the lightning damage implicit. When you shock an enemy, they take 10% increased damage from all sources and and not to mention, anything that has shields will be taking bonus damage on top of that, which quite a number of enemies will have shields. And it's otherwise just a solid rifle with good magazine capacity, rate of fire, and damage. Picking up a lightning blast with some good rolls on it will disintegrate everything in sight. Last but not least, the prism, or what I like to call the kunai. Shuriken, dagger, kunai, it's all the same thing when you're talking about this weapon. Its most interesting feature is having only one shot per magazine, if you can even call it that, so it doesn't ever need to be reloaded, and thus cannot roll any reload inscriptions. This opens up the potential rolls to include more chances at god tier ones. The prism's main strength lies in its fast projectile speed and high crit damage. The daggers travel very quickly and can pierce through enemies, and on top of that have a three times crit multiplier, so if you hit the weak spot, wow, does it deal some nice damage. It doesn't have an auto fire function, so you'll still need to click every time you want to throw a dagger, but once you learn the rhythm, it is very easy to keep the shots flowing out. In addition to the innate pierce, the daggers also bounce multiple times 
times off of terrain if you miss, which makes it even more useful in situations where your aim isn't as pinpoint as you may like. Seriously, the Prism is definitely one of the strongest weapons overall right now, and if you haven't tried it out much, you should absolutely give it a shot. Do you have any differing thoughts? Do you want to see more gunfire content? Let me know with a like or dislike on the video and a comment below. You can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash woollygaming and consider joining our Discord server for a place to talk more gunfire or find a place to play with others. Thank you for watching.